In early 1914, a spiritualist cinematographer from the Supernormal Picture Society of London joined the Royal Expedition to the Antarctic. His name was James Maker. He was also known as Hivemaker. James Hivemaker hoped to photograph evidence of life after death. The spring of 1915 found James Hivemaker in France, where gas warfare had begun at the Battle of Ypres. Hivemaker photographed the Allied reaction to the new threat. Each day's batch of developed film brought Hivemaker closer to his goal of recording the moving spirits of the dead. The Supernormal Picture Society taught that the dead live near to us, but in an unknown world. This world could be made visible to us by the cinematographer who could see through the haze of our world to the darkness beyond. To the supernormal cinematographer, the ghost was a spiritual radium in decay, which could stain photographic film. It lived in the land of the dead. Hivemaker wrote that he imagined this to be a place of dense vegetation, where the souls of the dead lived in the form of small floating lights. Hivemaker believed that someday these lights would swarm into our world to join the living. In the summer of 1916, James Hivemaker returned to his home and business, a bee farm north of London, to supervise the season's work and check on his hives. A telegram had warned Hivemaker of a new disease among the British black bees. To forestall possible ruin, Hivemaker hoped to purchase an experimental stock of specialty bees from Mesopotamia. He had heard that these special bees were both plague-proof and abundant producers of an unusually clear honey. If the experiment was successful, he would replace his entire stock. In London that summer, the telegraph company had begun to modernize its operation. As a result, Ella Sparallum lost her job as a telephone operator. Ironically, Sparallum was herself an electrical inventor who dreamed of developing the means to transmit moving pictures through the telephone. Ella Sparallum was the half-sister of James Hivemaker. Through Hivemaker, Ella found work as a photographic medium at the Supernormal Picture Society. Each Sunday, ghosts would appear at a seance in Tavistock Square to be photographed with the living by Ella and her special camera. Often, the ghosts spoke to Ella. One talkative ghost had died in an auto accident. This ghost was the dead wife of a Hungaro-Egyptian gentleman who often attended the seances. This sad gentleman was the charming bee scientist, Zoltan Abbasid. Ella Sparalem discovered that Zoltan Abbasid knew her half-brother, James Hivemaker. It was Zoltan Abbasid who had brought the Mesopotamian bees to England. Abbasid had discovered the bees near Basra, in the south of Mesopotamia. In the fall of 1916, the bee plague struck Hivemaker's farm. The British bees began to die, their breathing tubes infested by parasite mites. Fortunately, the Mesopotamian bees flourished and quickly took root in the empty hives of the dead bees. At that moment, a sudden love grew between Ellis Baralem and Zoltan Abbasid. The two were married in the early winter. For their honeymoon, 
Zoltan Abbasid took his new wife to America to see the Cowboys. They stopped in Alamogordo, New Mexico. I live in Alamogordo with my wife, Melissa, right on the edge of the Army's Deseret Test Facility. My name is Jacob Maker. Hive Maker was my grandfather. I inherited my bees from him. I didn't keep them for the honey. I just like to watch them. Melissa and I were related. Hive Maker's half sister, Ella Sparalum, was Melissa's grandmother. Melissa and I met here in Alamogordo while we were working on the training simulator for the shuttle. When the project was finished, we got married. Melissa stayed on the shuttle as part of the technical support group. I was reassigned to another part of the company. We still went to work together, but I'd felt uneasy ever since my reassignment. There was something in the air. Maybe my eyes weren't very good. That had to do with the job. I spent a lot of time in front of a screen at Frisch Flight Simulation, right on the side of the mountain above town. I was assigned to military systems, where we built weapon systems trainers, making sure that everything was as real as possible. I didn't really understand what was going on until the first time 